Is the Korean backdash still useful in Tekken 8? Yes. Tekken 8 made individual backdashes faster, so it's way more accessible to casuals and newcomers. The Korean backdash is faster though, so if you're taking the game seriously, let's learn it. What I'm about to give you is a modified version of the Speed Kicks backdash tutorial. I've adapted it to support leverless and keyboard as well. There will also be a section at the end for leverless specific techniques, but I recommend following the entire video because it's important to see how each step flows into the next. And by the way, I recommend checking out Speed Kicks' original video after this. It is an experience. Let's get started. First thing, we're going to pick Nina, Paul, or Brian. If you cheat your input and do a quarter circle back, they'll do a backsway, and you'll immediately know if you messed up the input. The second thing we'll do is turn on the command history, and this is crucial to how we're going to develop this skill. Step one, we're going to mark the movement. Copy this exact command history. Back, release, back, down, back, back, release, and repeat. The numbers next to your input don't matter, that's just how long you're holding each button down. We don't care how the character looks, we only care about the inputs. Do it literally this slowly with the same intensity you'd use in-game. Really listen to and feel each individual input. Even if it looks simple for our brain, it takes time to program our hands. No, like seriously, you should be getting bored. It should seem mundane. You should be frustrated. You know in Karate Kid or in Cobra Kai where the kid is just waxing on and waxing off the entire time, not actually learning karate? This is the same thing. You're drilling the movement so that when it's time to go fast and when it's time to coordinate, your hands are programmed and ready to go. Step two is practicing single cancels. There's only one part that requires speed, and that's the dash input. Let me show you. Start by just holding back. This is our resting position. When you're ready to attempt to cancel, hold down back. Now this is the fast part. Release the down input, but keep holding back. Then quickly reset to neutral and hit back again. This is where people will talk about having a free input, but that's not really a thing. You need to guide your stick or controller d-pad to the first back, release, and then press the second back. Nothing happens for free, but some controllers have an easier time. Prioritize matching the command history here. I highly recommend spending multiple hours on this step, at the bare minimum one hour. The more time you spend here, the easier it is to speed up later. If you try to speed up too quickly, it'll be a sloppy mess for weeks. Again, you want to hear and feel each click of every switch. If you're playing on pad, you'll want to really connect your thumb movement to the input history on screen. Keep repeating this step, don't move on, until you can do this as one fluid motion. This is what it will look like. You're holding back, and then in one fluid motion, press down back, release, and backdash in one go. If you're on a Japanese stick, I recommend using a very light touch at this step. The spring is really light, and you want the spring to help you return to neutral to get the double back input. Here are what the single cancels look like on the player 2 side. Once you can get that quick release single cancel very fluid, you can now backdash at any rhythm. And this means you can backdash with any character. A faster backdash is done by just reducing the time between each single cancel. I don't recommend trying to go full speed for at least a few hours, if not a couple days. That said, here are a few tips for step 3, speeding it up. Start to relax your hand more. We did all of that hand programming and slow training so that when it's time to go fast, our hand can completely relax. If you go too fast here with too much tension, you can introduce a lot of pain and injure yourself. Tip number two is to keep the input history clean. If you make more than three mistakes in a row, revisit the single cancels. It is better to go too slow than to do it wrong. We are building muscle memory and once it's programmed, it's really hard to deprogram. My third tip is that it is very normal to feel like you're getting worse randomly and better randomly. If you fall into a rut and keep messing up, don't bash your head into a wall. Switch to the two player side and practice those movements. If you keep messing up on both sides, put the controller down for a full 60 seconds and physically stand up. Scroll Twitter or Instagram or something and then come back. And I promise you'll come back way more cracked. Okay, literally take your mind and hands completely off the task and revisit it fresh. It doesn't have to be a long break, but it makes a huge difference. I completely relearned the input on Leverless, and I spent about 4 hours on day 1, and then 3 hours on day 2, before I could start stringing them together without messing up the input. And even then, sometimes I would just start messing up. I would get up and leave, come back, and I'd do it perfectly. If you're a pad or stick player, you're free to go. Just leave a like and a comment on the way out, would you?
Let me know if you have any questions and be sure to check out that speed kicks video. It's great. Let's talk about the SOCD backdash now, a specific technique for leverless controllers and keyboards. My personal recommendation is using the SOCD backdash on the P1 side and the manual backdash on the P2 side. The manual backdash is what we did in the first half of this video. I believe this mix is the best ergonomically. SOCD means that when you hold left and right at the same time, you get neutral. We will use this to our advantage for backdashing. Since backdashing requires a neutral input, using this method helps us avoid double tapping the same buttons over and over. We're still going to follow the same steps from before. Step 1, mark the movement. The command history game is still important here. However, for the neutral input, the space between the two back inputs, we're not going to let go of the back button. We're instead going to also press the forward button. These two buttons together will give a neutral input. Step two is doing the single cancels. My one tip is to scrape the tip of your finger across the down button in order to release it quickly. This is for two reasons. When you curl the middle finger, it reduces the shared effort between the middle and ring finger. The scraping motion also reduces how long you're holding down back, giving you a faster and safer cancel. If your command history shows a down input, that means you hit forward before you let go of down. We don't want this. Remember to always match the command history. As you start to speed up your single cancels, pay close attention to each individual backdash that you do. If any of your inputs go wrong, immediately stop and look at what happened. With the SOCD method, it's too easy to autopilot a bunch of backdashes together and not see where one went wrong. Program that muscle memory. You can also find some other methods on the Hitbox Arcade website, such as the two-handed SOCD backdash and the jump cancel SOCD backdash. But in my opinion, these two methods can affect other skills like whiff punishment. That said, find whatever method allows you to play without pain. That's the number one priority. And that's it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Let me know if this method helped you learn the Korean backdash. And subscribe if you want to see more. And don't forget, check out that Speed Kicks video. It is super funny. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. 好き放題やってんじゃねえぞ